Hi everyone, my name is Eva. Welcome to the first of Industrial Sound Mechanics new question and answer video series. I would like to thank all our subscribers and customers for sending us all their great questions on social media. If you wish to ask any additional questions um, or follow up on this video, you can leave a comment below or email us at contact at soundmechanics.com. Today, we asked Alexi, uh, President and Chief Scientist at Industrial Sound Mechanics, to join us and answer the first question in our Q&A video series. Alexi, tell us what is unique about ISM's ultrasonic liquid processors and how are they different from other ultrasonic systems that are found uh, on the market? Hi, everyone. There are two aspects of our technology that allow our customers to make their own nano emulsions. On the hardware side, we offer ultrasonic systems. The unique feature of these systems is that they're directly scalable. This is a typical uh, conventional ultrasonic horn. When we use this horn, this is what we use, this kind of a small little um, reservoir with, um, with the liquid. Transducer vibrates this horn at its input side over here. And then the horn goes through um, an amplitude uh, transformation um, along its length. And uh, in the end, the tip of the horn vibrates up and down with a high amplitude. So this distance here, it's not visible to the naked eye, it's in, in microns, but a high amplitude is typically 80 microns or so. Uh, 70 is considered reasonably high. Typically 100 is very high. In order for this to happen, this type of horn goes through a shape a transformation where the input end is thick and, and heavy and then whatever happens in the middle happens and then in, as a result you have a, a thin uh, tip that, that vibrates with a much larger amplitude than this side. Uh, it's always been believed that that's a conservation of momentum related phenomenon when something big and, and heavy vibrates or moves with a smaller velocity uh, uh, but is in contact with something uh, small and light, then it pushes it in such a way that the small and light object vibrates with a much greater velocity. In this case, it translates into amplitude. So this thing is uh, there to amplify the amplitude of the transducer that's driving it and ultimately deliver the vibration into the working fluid, process fluid, we call it. Because this tip is small and because the effect that it produces is kind of restricted to this area here, there's a cavitation cloud, it's called, what forms under this. So this is the part that's doing all the work. Uh, if you do it in, in a little vial like this, then all of the liquid gets exposed because it, it mixes itself as, as the process happens. There's, there's a, it's called acoustic streaming, the liquid uh, kind of tumbles, moves around. But a beaker like this, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna give you the result that you're looking for. It's too much to, uh, expect a little tip like this to homogeneously process that large amount of liquid. The only way to scale this up is to make this tip bigger so that you can work in, you know, a beaker like this or a beaker like this. But really what you want is work in a beaker at all, but go into a flow through scenario where you would just have a tank and you would flow through something like uh, a device like this, we call it reactor chamber or it's flow cell. I'll show you how it fits into the system. And then you can process unlimited uh, amounts of liquid. Uh, but in order for you to scale this process up, the tip of the horn has to be large. So it turns out that with conventional ultrasonic technology, if you increase the size of the tip, you have to reduce the amplitude. It's, uh, uh, the, they're not independent variables in the way that conventional horns are designed. When the tip gets larger, the amplitude gets smaller, and there's no way out of it. So our company was formed around the invention of what we call barbell horn. It's driven by a transducer from up here. Then it goes through a shape transformation. We don't have to get into those details. It ends up with a tip that's basically the same as this tip in terms of its size. But the amplitude here is 100 microns. So we um, uh, have the technology We've developed a technology that allows you to scale up without losing the amplitudes. We've made the variables of size of the tip and the amplitude that the tip produces independent of each other. So we can increase them both at the same time. The first scale up uh, step would be to go to this. 
So this is, these components are from our LSP 600 ultrasonic system. Alternatively, you can use a reactor chamber like this, and then you can flow it. it the liquid would flow into the bottom, flow out the top right here, and it would go into a larger um, storage tank. So the size of this tip basically determines the productivity rate. This is a horn from a BSP 1200 system. So this would be a typical beaker for it. But people using BSP 1200 uh, units typically go through flow through scenarios. This would be your horn. So we call this horn HBH and it has other advantages. This horn also starts with a, a small amplitude at the end the transducer is driving. It has the tip that vibrates with the large amplitude, 90 microns or whatever. And the cavitation zone is formed under it, but because it's thin and the whole thing vibrates up and down, you have another cavitation zone up here. So believe it or not, even though this is much smaller and lighter than this horn, it's actually twice as large in terms of its output area. This is a more powerful horn than this one. That would typically happen with this horn and this type of reactor chamber that has a cooling jacket on it so you can maintain the temperature and you can flow in and out uh, with a larger storage tank than the previous scenario. Uh, to scale up from there, you'd go to a horn like this. This is a much larger device. The scale up factor between this one and the small conventional devices is easily on the order of 60. So you can, if you, if you process something for an hour and get the result that you want, then with this one, it'll be one minute, <laughs> okay? Some, some, somewhere along these lines. So this combines um, the batch capability and the flow through capability all at the same time. So it could fit into this much larger beaker like this, but typically you wouldn't use it in a beaker. You would either use it directly in a larger tank, but what you'd normally use is a reactor chamber like this, and then there would be a heat exchanger and a much, much larger tank and, and a pump, and you would flow through all this. So this horn, Combines the batch and the flow through capabilities, same horn, so you don't need to switch. Uh, and the amplitude here is extremely high. I think it goes to something like 115 microns, which is overkill for, for most processes. So uh, the summary is we can scale up any process that works on the lab scale to any scale that you want without losing the quality of the results. The other side of what we offer is formulations. So. These are the two types of all-in-one nanostabilizer that we offer. So this is nanostabilizer LT. This is nanostabilizer LSO. They're both all-in-one formulation packages, surfactant packages, if you will, with carrier oils and other things that make it unnecessary for our customers to develop their own formulations. Basically, if you have a, let's say, cannabis extract, CBD, extract, CBD isolate, whatever, or an essential oil, uh, as long as it's oil soluble and not water compatible, and you would like to make it water compatible, then you could just, in most cases, definitely in, in the cannabis cases, and in, with most other extracts, you could just use this all-in-one formulation. We provide SLPs, uh, mix your cannabis extract with this, add water, run it through an ultrasonic processor and get your nano emulsion. The difference between these two nanostabilizers is that this one leads to a translucent uh, nano emulsion with extremely small droplet sizes on the order of 20, 30 nanometers. Um, that's very good for bioavailability on set of action improvements. It, 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 it's pretty much as good as a nano emulsion can be. It's translucent and when you dose it in a larger amount of beverage, which is typically what people do, it becomes transparent. So it doesn't alter the appearance of your beverage, including water. Water will remain completely transparent. The advantage of this nanostabilizer, I mean, there are many little advantages and disadvantages and, and things to compare, but the main advantage of this one is that after you make this liquid nano emulsion, which will come out with somewhat larger droplets and it won't be translucent, it'll be somewhat opaque, but that nano emulsion can be dried directly with no other things added to them and uh, convert it into a powder. And the powder would be water compatible, therefore making cannabis extracts water compatible. You could just throw it in, in water and it will reconstitute to the original nano emulsion, be stable, be very bioavailable, and you can compress it into pills 
which will rapidly disintegrate in the mouth and um, reconstitute into non emulsion in your saliva, which you then swallow. So you don't need a beverage to dose this into. You can just consume it directly, and it's much easier to ship. And I mean, everyone knows the advantages of powers. So those are the two main things that we believe are very valuable and, and unique to our company. Thank you, Alexi. We'll be posting a new video every week, so please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to stay up to date, and we'll see you next time.